but there's a strong feeling that Jakobsen, with 27 straight wins behind him, is the man to depose a champion that many people feel is slightly past his best. Anyway, Denmark expects. Harry Carpenter describes what happened, and we join it at the start of round three. When Hogan uh, last defended this title against Santana of Puerto Rico, when he got that uh, terrible right eye injury, in fact, Santana was declared the winner in the 11th round because the fight was stopped because of the facial damage to Hogan. And 30 minutes later, when Santana was holding the winner's press conference, IBF officials came into the room and said they'd looked up their rule book and they'd found out that their own rules said that if an accidental butt occurred and a fight had to be stopped because of damage, after five rounds had been completed, then uh, the judges' scores had to be counted. And when they took the judges' scores in, they found that Holgan was ahead on two of the three cards. And so they told Santana they were very sorry, but he wasn't the world champion after all. It was still Holgan. And that happened in April this year. Jackson defended his European lightweight title five times against continental opponents before he was stripped of the title early this year for failing to defend it against René Weller, the man he took it from, the West German. And the Dane suddenly finding new confidence. Third round. Jakobsen in the red trunks. Obviously decided that uh, he's going to have to take the initiative a bit here if he's going to get anywhere at all. And this is a very significant evening indeed for Danish boxing. They haven't had a world champion since 1917. A man called Kid Williams from Denmark was the world bantamweight champion. But they haven't had one for 71 years. And Organ taunting his man, saying, that's not the sort of stuff that hurts me. Don't care for that too much myself, that sort of clowning in the ring. But it seems to be becoming more common. He used to say, cut out the talking and get on with the fighting. Jakobsen knows full well what he's up against here because uh, he's really going to have to pull out something tremendous to beat this man because here's a very tough man indeed who will take everything that Jakobsen will throw at him and probably still come back. End of the third and that was a little better for Jakobsen. That's the first decent round he's had. First two he probably just lost, certainly lost the second. But that was a little more encouraging for him, this 26-year-old Dane. And he did put together one or two good punches. That was a good right counter. That is Jakobsen's favourite punch, the right-hand counter. The Danes regard him as fast and clever with a hard right hand. And he had good moments here. That was a good right hand. But it didn't do a lot of damage to Horgan. Well, now Jakobsen seems to be settling down, round five. And he's beginning to bring that right-hand counterpunch more and more into play. And one of the tactics here will be to try to open up old damage on Horgan's face. Even though he's had surgery to try and uh, pull the skin together, he must surely still be vulnerable. And he's believed to be having weight problems, the champion in the white trunks. He had to shed five pounds in 24 hours, it's said before he fought Santana in April. There's the right hand again from Jakobsen. And now suddenly, the fans in Copenhagen are getting behind him.
He's had 24 fights as a pro. He's won 22, 10 of them inside the distance. One draw and one defeat. He won this IBF title in his 20th pro fight in 1986 in Las Vegas when he outpointed Jimmy Paul over 15 rounds. In those days, the IBF title was fought over the longer distance. It was an upset uh, result, but then he lost the title in his first defense in 87 to Vinnie Pazienza. And there's damage on the champion's face. A streak of blood appears on the left cheek. Surely he's not going to have all that trouble over again, is he? Fifth round. got the title back in February this year in Atlantic City. He regained it from Vinnie Pazienza with a 15-round points win. But he does tend to have very hard fights. Now the boos are coming gently again for Jakobsen. A pretty fickle crowd here, they're only behind him when he's really on top. And for the fifth. And a mixture of boos and cheers for Jakobsen as he goes back to his corner. He's had uh, eye trouble as well in a fight with Joey Medina earlier this year in Las Vegas. Jakobsen reaching for him with the left hand here, not quite finding the range again that quick right hand over the top that's the one that always spells danger for Horgan well now as we move into the seventh so uh, this fight is uh, at the moment looking pretty even Horgan certainly had the better of the first couple of rounds Jakobsen has had his moments in a couple of rounds since. The other rounds have been fairly level. So it's very much in the balance at the moment. The hard man, Horgan, in white, the champion. And the man, obviously, with the better boxing skills. But does he have the toughness to really go with Horgan over a long distance in a hard fight? That's what has to be proved. Part, uh, part Sioux Indian, Horgan. He really does have an extraordinary background with that sort of ancestry and with those tough man tournament fights in Alaska, even before he turned pro. He recently had 24 of those tough man fights. He won 24 in a row back in 1980. He didn't turn professional until 1982. And Horgan shakes his head and says, no, they don't hurt me. Not so sure. Sometimes boxers smile when they are hurt. So the Danes pinning their faith on this man, the unbeaten Geert Bo Jakobsen, attempting to become the first Danish world champion since 1917. Little smears of blood seem to be appearing around the eyes of Horgan. No great uh, damage done, but just little telltale signs. And Horgan looking strong and determined in this round. And Jakobsen hasn't really found him with a good counter. Jakobsen beginning to look a little ragged. 
when a man keeps coming at you, a hard man like Horgan, then uh, gradually exhaustion tends to overtake you. And Jakobsen's beginning to pick up a few punches, another one to the body at the bell. And that seventh round might well have been a significant turnaround there. Because Jakobsen suddenly started to look vulnerable and he doesn't look very happy in the corner. This man's got a little damage around the eyes, particularly on the right eye. So the surgery hasn't been that successful. But Horgan now beginning to move into this pattern of attack and aggression keeping Jakobsen under pressure all the time. Well, the ninth round, and Jakobsen on the right. The Danish challenger has done nothing to stop Horgan coming at him. Horgan now wearing a little piece of plaster on the cut at the side of the right eye. I'm surprised the referees allowed him to get away with that. seem to be much fire behind Jakobsen's work now. And it's noticeable over the last couple of rounds he's picked up more and more punishment, particularly to the body. And Horgan somehow has a look about him of a man who feels he's getting right on top, and I think he is. in red, the man who's never known what uh, it is to be defeated in a professional contest. But that experience might be quite close. Corbin, like a miniature steamroller, he just keeps coming forward. He doesn't do anything very spectacular, but he keeps grinding you down. And no matter what Jakobsen tries to do with him, he still comes forward. This is one of the real tough men of boxing, Greg Horgan, from Auburn, Washington State. Nothing behind these punches of the Dane. End of round nine coming up. Three more to go after this. And the going getting increasingly hard for Jakobsen. Morgan, with a clock in his head, he knows the end of the round is near. And again, puts the pressure on and he's making signs to Jakobsen as if to say, don't forget, I'm the champion, and I intend to stay that way. Well, he's not one of the gracious champions, that's for sure. But he is a tough boy. So, round ten coming up. Three rounds to go if we go all the way. Jakobsen has now picked up a slight cut near the left eye. And this was the pressure being put on the Dane as the round came to its end. Once again, in the 10th, Horgan is applying the pressure and he's beginning to sneer and taunt at Jakobsen all the time. Well, he won't win any Mr. Nice Guy contest, Horgan, but he's a, a formidable lightweight champion. The IBF champion, Greg Horgan, with a rather weak and dispirited Danish challenger Jakobsen in front of him now, one feels. 
Hogan's work's getting slower and slower and more and more tentative. And Hogan, apart from some damage around the eyes, looks as strong as ever. Good punch. A left and then a following right hand, and that may well be the end. He's spread eagles, the challenger on the canvas, cut around the left eye. Smash down by right hand. And he's just about beaten the count. And the referee's coming in again, and it's all over. Well, perhaps the referee could have uh, stopped it when he got up. He wasn't in any fit state to continue, really. And after another couple of seconds, with Horgan determined to put the man down again, it was all over. It was the, the right hand, of a good little left first, but the right hand that came over, driving Jakobsen down to the floor. He only just about beat the count. He was in no real fit state to continue. And so Horgan, Greg Horgan, 28 years old, the part Sioux Indian, is still the IBF lightweight champion. Hardman Horgan wins again. And Mo Hussein, who we 